there's nothing like pushing the ick factor in my face mm -hmm. to rile me up and make me say you haven't seen anything yet. Thank you so much for tuning in again to Second Act TV. Today, I want to welcome back Joan Price, the award-winning author, international speaker, the author of five books, including the one we're going to talk about today, Naked at RH, Talking Out Loud About Senior Sex. I love that title. I've referenced it before. Joan, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so happy to be here with you talking about this very important topic. It is an important topic and one that we cover deeply here on Second Act because, yeah, sex after 60, 50, I mean, senior sex, it, it, it's important. It's important to our well-being, to our lifestyle, whatever. And it's so difficult to talk about. And where I want to start our conversation uh today, Joan, is that you are, of course, uh, regarded as the go-to sex bird by the media. You know, you are known for talking about senior sex. And, and it all started when you wrote your first book, Better Than uh, I Ever Expected, Straight Talk About Sex After 60. What yes. a great title. Matter of fact, <laughs> the San Francisco Chronicle reviewed it and their lead title was now that baby boomers have discovered their sex after 60 could they please stop writing about it and that caused so much pushback so much ridicule that, that many would say i'm surprised joan continued with this let's talk about that i think this is so important oh for our i was audience just getting understand. started <laughs> there's nothing like pushing the ick factor in my face mm -hmm. to rile me up and make me say you haven't seen anything yet i thought that better than i ever expected was going to be my only book about senior sex mm -hmm. but actually the reaction from this writer at the san francisco chronicle i do remember her name but i'm not going to say it because i don't want her to have the publicity here <laughs> sorry louise the reaction from the readers, however, was the opposite of that. They said to me, thank goodness someone's talking about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought I was the only one with questions. Mm -hmm. And the biggest response I got, which I did not expect, mm -hmm. was, well, bully for you having great sex at your age, but I'm not, and here's why. And I thought, oh, wow, I really am just getting started because... Now, instead of celebrating older age sexuality, which was what better than I ever expected was, mm -hmm. I need to write another book that addresses the problems, the challenges. Yes. It was a mysterious thing. People weren't talking about it. Mm -hmm. And even the people who ought to have been talking about it, such as our doctors, hello. Yes. Yes. They didn't know anything about it. They'd look at us and they were often the age of our children or grandchildren even. Mm -hmm. And they'd go, well, what do you expect? You're old. You know, they didn't know anything. Well, and that's right. And that's one of the biggest things that stands in the way is, is our yeah. belief, what we have been made to believe, what we believe ourselves yes. is that when you're old, as you age, you lose interest in sex. And certainly the younger generation is like, ooh, you know, my grandparents having sex. Yeah, we are. <laughs> what, what is true, Joan? What? <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to bust that myth in a, you know, in, in, in a 30 seconds? <laughs> well, first of all, for everything that I assert, there will be someone who says, I disagree with that totally mm -hmm. uh, because um, all seniors and I'll group myself as a senior. I'm now 80. I have an attitude that we are all deserving of sexual pleasure and that sexual pleasure can be ours lifelong with the right information and the willingness to communicate and mm -hmm. to explore. I call mm -hmm. it going on a journey of exploration to see what works for us now. Because one of the big myths is if sex for us does not work the way it used to, then it won't work at all and we might as well give it up. 
One thing that that you wrote that really spoke to me is is when you said that we need to, I'm looking at it here, redefine yeah. what real sex is. And I thought about that because everybody thinks sex is, you know, penis and vagina sex intercourse, that that's the old, that that's sex. The truth is it isn't. And you know, it, it, it's, it, let's talk about that. How do you let's read, talk about that? Yeah. I have a webinar uh, available mm-hmm. from my website uh, for a small fee called great sex without penetration. There are many reasons we might want to consider that. Penises don't work the way they used to. Vaginas are not as accommodating as they used to be. The source of pleasure for a vulva owner is the clitoris. It's not inside the vagina anyway. Intercourse is just one choice of the many sexual options that can bring us to arousal and orgasm, Mm -hmm. solo or partnered. This kind of sexual interaction can be as intimate Mm -hmm. as intercourse. Mm -hmm. Or more. (laughs) You don't lose anything. What you do is you gain. I wish I had known that exploring how to normalize making sex all these other paths to Mm -hmm. pleasure not foreplay because foreplay says this is what we do until we get to the main event yeah let's let other things be the main event let's Mm -hmm. let manual sex or oral sex or yay sex toys be the main event yeah well and i think that's and again see if you agree with me i think one of the big obstacles that stands in the way for us not only enjoying sex but but regaining desire especially especially women is our uh, belief or attitude towards self pleasure and towards sex toys two of the best ways to recapture your sensuality isn't it oh yeah and for more than a decade, I have been mm-hmm. reviewing sex toys from a senior perspective on my blog, which you'll find at joanprice.com. Because what we need is not necessarily the same. It is likely not the same as what a 20 year old mm-hmm. needs. Mm-hmm. And so I take new, wonderful sex toys and see, do they work for seniors? And I've been doing this for a really long time. For me, it's so easy to talk about this now. I remember when I, it's like, I'm a different person. (laughs) Once I discovered, you know, sex after 50, absolutely the best sex ever. You know, especially when when you talk about, you know, younger people and this, uh, what what a lot of people, and let's emphasize that, don't understand, especially men and maybe even women, we don't realize that what is it like only 20% have uh, orgasms during intercourse? What, what, talk to me about that. Yes, about that, because Mm -hmm. the research isn't really done very well. That is not talking to older people. So I would guess that that percentage is even lower for for us. In all of everything you just talked about, there's so much, you know, people might be listening is going, oh God, I, I'd, I'd never, or I've never heard this, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm looking forward to the comments. We get great comments, great questions, and, you know, I'll, I'll pass those on to you. But you you dedicate two chapters in your book to unlearning our upbringing. Oh. That our upbringing and what we believe is what holds us back so much. Uh, l- let's talk about that. How? What do you mean by that? And is there some key ways of doing that? Yes. Part of unlearning our upbringing, I think it's different if we were raised as a girl or raised as a boy, which is why I've got the two separate chapters and, mm-hmm. the, and the content is quite different. Right. If we were raised as a girl, mm-hmm. we were never raised to understand or prioritize sexual pleasure. Our education, such as it was, and it was really lousy, was fear-based. You'll get pregnant. uh, Boys will use you. Mm -hmm. They won't marry you. Why buy the cow if you get the milk for free? My grandmother really told me that. Yeah. (laughs) I know. Too late for my grandmother, but not too late for me. Yeah. So what girls are taught is to avoid sex because it's dangerous and to be shameful about it. Right. And we all knew those girls in high school. They got Mm -hmm. pregnant pregnant, Mm -hmm. or they had a reputation. Right. They were the sluts. 
Mm -hmm. right. But as we get to our age, we have to unlearn that message that mm -hmm. A, sex is shameful, right. that B, we don't talk out loud about it, mm -hmm. that C, we certainly don't talk about what we want, that yeah. D, we even know what we want. Oh, mm -hmm. come on. We have to unlearn all that. Mm -hmm. Now, since I know I don't have a full hour on this, I'll go to <laughs> if we were raised as boys. <laughs> totally different message. The boys will be boys message. Be careful mm -hmm. you don't get a girl pregnant. It could ruin your life. Mm -hmm. Not hers. Your yes. life. Right. Was he taught how not to get a girl pregnant? No, nah, not really. Did he learn that from his friends? Possibly, except mm -hmm. I sure heard about a lot of boys that bought a condom and kept in, it in their wallet yeah. just in case mm -hmm. through several summers, yeah. summers <laughs> in the same jeans pocket. Did he learn about giving a woman ple pleasure? Nothing about that. Never. It was all about getting in, getting off, getting out. And mm -hmm. that he didn't learn from his parents. He learned from the other boys mm -hmm. who would brag about sex they might not have ever had, but yes. no one was going to know that. Yes. So there was so much misinformation going yes. on. Yes. As a man who wants to please his partner, mm -hmm. he needs to unlearn all of that. And yeah. in fact, learn to ask the question, what do you like? How can mm -hmm. I please you? Would that that was a part of sex education. And how can we not carry that forth? I know I carried it forth big time. I mean, even, even today when we talk, when we do have talks about on this channel about starting over again, meetings that, you know, when do you go to bed with somebody and, and you know, you don't want to be used. I mean, that still comes up. Yeah. So, and, and you're right. This is nothing against men, against women. This is just no. the way it was when we grew yeah. up. And as you say, with the condom, nobody used a condom that none of that came about until after the AIDS crisis yeah. that where people actually use condoms. So yeah, lots, lots of, lots of things, lots of things to, yeah. to unlearn. The older we are, the more we have to unlearn. Yes. And I talk about, I talk to, to people about that all the time. Uh, for example, uh, uh, women will say, I'm not, uh, um, I'm having sex and I, and my partner's willing to give me clitoral stimulation, hooray, but mm -hmm. I, I don't get it. It's not intense enough. I don't ever mm -hmm. have orgasms. And so mm -hmm. I was like, ah, it, for intensity, we need a vibrator. And she'll say, well, ah, uh, no, I, uh, I couldn't do that. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've never used one. And therefore, well, um, th oh, uh, that was nothing that I was, uh, it was something I was taught was wrong. Yeah. How many of the lessons you were taught was wrong have you unlearned, I will say. Mm -hmm. And I'll say that even when they say, oh, no one wants to see this old baggy body. Um, mm -hmm. So I can't have sex again because I'm so ashamed of my body. Mm -hmm. Why are you ashamed of your body? Well, because uh, only young, hard bodies are beautiful. And where'd you learn that? Lots of lots of stuff. The whole body shame is a whole other issue. <laughs> Talking about questions, and and we are starting to get to the end, so I I want to make sure I get this in. There are, as we referenced, so so many myths and so many misunderstandings. Uh, what are some of what you think are some of the bigger, or some of the questions you get that have actually surprised you that our audience might really identify with? Like, oh my God, that's me. You know, is, is there something that comes to mind when I when I ask that question? I am rarely surprised anymore, but that's because I've been collecting their, their questions for many, many years. And in fact, I've been writing a column for mm -hmm. seniorplanet.org, a monthly okay. column answering sex questions. Mm -hmm. And I am now in my 10th year of doing one a month of these. Okay. It's often the same questions with different okay. stories the I won't say I'm surprised by questions anymore. I am surprised that people don't know the haven't found the answers to some of these by now. Mm -hmm. From a woman, for example, I never feel uh, in the mood anymore. So we don't mm -hmm. have sex. And my, mm -hmm. my partner who is male is is always pressuring me. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. they need to learn. And I, and I'm not going to go into all these because I know we don't have much time, but they need to learn the difference between spontaneous and responsive desire that you can engage. You can not know you're in the mood until you've gotten started feeling pleasure mm -hmm. physically. The most common question I get from, from men is not surprisingly, my wife doesn't want to have sex with me anymore. Mm -hmm. It's driving mm -hmm. me crazy. What do I do? Mm -hmm. We are monogamous. There are some things here. One is find out why your wife doesn't want to have sex anymore. Is it a physical problem? Does she feel pain? Do you always do the same kind of sex mm -hmm. that is no longer pleasurable for her or mm -hmm. comfortable for her? Are there issues in your relationship? Is it not sex at all, but she's angry at you? Are there things you're not talking about that uh, are, are you not hearing mm -hmm. what she's bringing to this? What, what's yeah. going on for you? He'll ask the question as if what's the magic bullet for yeah. making my wife want to have sex with me mm -hmm. anymore? A a in fact, I got one today. You'll go, is there something she can take where mm -hmm. she'll want to have sex with me again? Well, it isn't always that, but I get a lot of relationship issues like that. It, 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 of course, the answer is communication, but that's a word. That's just a word until you learn how to do it. And that's another right. part of unlearning our upbringing. Yeah. We were not taught to talk mm -hmm. about sex. In fact, we, in fact, we were taught not to. Well, you have made huge strides <laughs> in talking about senior <laughs> sex. I think I've referenced it uh, several times is that I've, I've been following you for, uh, well, the, at least five years when I discovered you, you and referenced your work and I'm just so excited that I'm oh, sitting here talking you. with you. Is there a parting message that you want to give us about senior sex, sex after 50, 60, 70, way into your 80s? <laughs> yes, there is. Sex in our older years is not going to look like or feel like sex in our younger years. Mm -hmm. That does not mean that it is deficient or defective in any way. It can be glorious if we open mm -hmm. our minds to what brings us pleasure now? How can we receive pleasure? How can we give pleasure? What works for us now? And keep a sense of humor. Because if you can't laugh at old people's sex, what can you laugh at? And I'm saying that speaking at 80 years old. I love it. You are such an inspiration, Joan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean that. And it, it's funny when you say humor. I, I sometimes get comments, well, why do you always giggle about when you're talking about these serious issues, especially for men, when we talk about, you know, it's like, if you can't talk, if you can't laugh just a little bit, then yeah, it's always serious. And you have to be able to, you know, look at this in, in a light way so we can learn. And I will I will link to all of your information, to your website, to your blog, to all of your books, including Sex After Grief and a whole other topic that you and I just finished talking about. And it's so, so, yeah. so, so, so important. So thank you again. Thank you for your time. And I look forward to having you back again soon on Second Act TV. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.